I'm incredibly excited to share this message with you today. I understand that many of you have significant dreams and goals, but at times, it can feel daunting and almost impossible to bring into fruition. Trust me, I've been in that place as well. However, today, I want to discuss something that has been pivotal to my success and the success of countless others. Discipline. In today's message, we'll explore the five keys to turning your dreams into reality through the power of discipline. I acknowledge that discipline may sound intimidating to some, it might evoke images of strict rules and limitations. Nevertheless, I assure you that discipline is not about punishment or restriction. Rather, it's about setting yourself up for success and reaching your true potential. And the best part, you're not alone on this journey. We all encounter challenges with discipline in various aspects of our lives, be it in relationships, careers, health, or personal development. By tuning into this message, you're taking the initial step towards turning things around and manifesting the life you genuinely desire. So, get ready to jot down some notes because in this video, I'll share with you the five keys to discipline that will enable you to unlock your full potential and transform your dreams into reality. Let's dive in. Starting with the fifth key, discipline. I understand what you may be thinking, discipline sounds mundane. However, let me tell you, discipline serves as the bridge between your dreams and your reality. It's the fundamental ingredient that distinguishes the successful from the average. Without discipline, your dreams will merely remain as such, mere dreams. So, what exactly is discipline? It's the ability to manage your thoughts, actions, and emotions to achieve a specific goal. It's the capacity to stay focused and committed even in the face of challenges and distractions. Discipline forms the backbone of success. We all harbor dreams and aspirations, yet what sets successful individuals apart is their capability to actualize those dreams into reality. And achieving this, my friends, necessitates discipline. Allow me to share a quote from one of my mentors, Earl Nightingale. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Pay attention to the term, progressive. Success isn't a one-time event, it's an ongoing journey, and discipline is what propels you forward, even when faced with adversity. Discipline isn't a trait that comes naturally to most of us, it's a skill that necessitates development and nurturing. Similar to any other skill, mastering discipline requires time and effort. However, the rewards that accompany discipline are immeasurable. Consider this scenario, suppose you aspire to shed weight and get in shape. You commence with a strict diet and exercise regimen. Initially, it's challenging, but you persevere. Then, a few weeks later, you encounter a hectic workday, leaving you drained. The last thing you desire is to hit the gym. This is where discipline comes into play. It's that inner voice urging you to push through, adhere to your routine, and not surrender. And when you witness the results of your diligence, that sense of achievement is invaluable. Discipline isn't solely about achieving your goals. It's also about character development. It instills in you qualities like patience, perseverance, and self-control. It facilitates your evolution into a better version of yourself. Now, let me pose a question. How many of you have set goals for yourselves and fallen short of accomplishing them? I'm confident that most of us have experienced this scenario. And what's the primary reason for such failure? Often, it boils down to a lack of discipline. We commence with great zeal, yet as time elapses, we lose sight of our objectives and succumb to distractions. We permit our emotions to overpower us, ultimately giving up. However, here's the crux. Discipline isn't about suppressing your emotions, it's about regulating them. It's about recognizing that emotions are transient, whereas the repercussions of your actions endure. It entails making a conscious choice to prioritize your goals over fleeting emotions. Now, I'd like to introduce three key principles that will aid you in cultivating discipline in your life. Firstly, establish a clear vision. Before you embark on achieving anything, you must ascertain what you desire. You need to delineate a clear, specific goal and remind yourself of it daily. This fosters focus and motivation. Secondly, devise a plan and adhere to it. Discipline hinges on consistency. You must devise a comprehensive plan and diligently adhere to it. This encompasses setting specific deadlines, breaking down your goal into manageable tasks, and monitoring your progress. Not only does this keep you on track, but it also imbues you with a sense of accomplishment upon task completion. Lastly, surround yourself with the right individuals. It's said that you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Hence, choose your circle wisely. Surround yourself with like-minded, disciplined individuals who inspire and hold you accountable. Moving on to the fourth key, 
Accountability. Accountability transcends merely assuming responsibility for your actions. It encompasses being answerable for your thoughts, decisions, and choices. It denotes a steadfast commitment to your goals and a willingness to undertake requisite actions to realize them. I've witnessed numerous individuals brimming with aspirations and potential, yet they seem to fall short of reaching their zenith. And the reason, often, it's a lack of accountability. They harbor dreams but balk at taking ownership of them. They evade being answerable for their actions and decisions, resulting in their dreams languishing as mere aspirations. However, if you harbor aspirations of transforming your dreams into reality, accountability is paramount. You must assume ownership of your goals and evince the determination to do whatever it takes to attain them. You must be answerable for your actions and decisions and, most importantly, be willing to hold yourself accountable. Accountability commences with introspection. It isn't about assigning blame or conjuring excuses. Rather, it entails assuming responsibility for your life and choices. It entails recognizing that you wield control over your destiny and your success hinges on your actions. So, how do you cultivate greater accountability? Firstly, establish clear, specific goals. Accountability necessitates direction. Hence, without a clear trajectory, holding yourself accountable becomes arduous. Your goals must be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This imbues you with a sense of purpose and direction, facilitating accountability. Secondly, formulate a plan. Your goals remain unattainable sans a concrete plan. Your plan should delineate the requisite steps to achieve your goals, encompassing a timeline and a mechanism to monitor your progress. This ensures you remain on course and hold yourself accountable for your actions. Thirdly, acquire an accountability partner. Having someone who holds you accountable and keeps you on track is invaluable. Your accountability partner could be a friend, family member, or mentor, someone you trust and respect, who won't countenance excuses. Fourthly, monitor your progress. While having a plan is indispensable, tracking your progress is equally crucial. It offers insights into your journey's evolution, enabling you to make requisite adjustments to stay on course. Additionally, it imbues you with a sense of accomplishment, fostering motivation. Lastly, take action. Despite possessing specific goals, a comprehensive plan, and a reliable accountability partner, success remains elusive sans action. You must evince consistency and unwavering commitment toward your goals. After all, action serves as the conduit between your dreams and reality. I understand that being accountable isn't always facile. It demands courage and determination to hold yourself accountable. However, the rewards far outweigh the challenges. When you assume accountability, you seize control of your life, charting your destiny's course. You become the architect of your future, empowered to sculpt the life you desire. Moreover, being accountable entails embracing failure and gleaning insights from it. Failure isn't antithetical to success. It's an integral facet thereof. It furnishes invaluable lessons, propelling you closer to your goals. Every successful person has experienced failure at some point in their life, but they didn't allow it to hinder them. Instead, they held themselves accountable, learned from their mistakes, and kept moving forward. Now, onto the third key to turning your dreams into reality, consistency. We all have dreams, whether big or small, that we aspire to achieve in our lives. Whether it's starting a successful business, traveling the world, or simply living a happy and fulfilling life, we all have something we aspire to. However, the sad truth is that many of us never see these dreams come to fruition. We get caught up in the daily grind, the demands of our jobs, and the distractions of modern life, losing sight of our dreams and settling for a mediocre existence. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way. You have the power to turn your dreams into reality, and the key to unlocking that power is consistency. Consistency is the secret ingredient that separates dreamers from achievers. It's the fuel that keeps the fire burning and propels you towards your goals. So, let me ask you, are you ready to harness the power of consistency and turn your dreams into reality? Consistency is the act of doing something repeatedly, consistently, and with purpose. It's not about doing something once and expecting immediate results. It's about showing up every day, putting in the work, and trusting the process. Consistency isn't always easy, but it's necessary if you want to achieve anything worthwhile in life. For example, in my own journey of personal development, I struggled with inconsistency initially. I would get inspired, take action, but then revert to old habits. 
However, when I made a commitment to consistency by reading every day, listening to motivational tapes, and attending seminars regularly, my life truly changed. I started seeing real progress, and my dreams started to become a reality. Consistency isn't just about taking action. It's also about staying committed to your goals, especially when faced with challenges. It's easy to be consistent when everything is going well, but true consistency is demonstrated during tough times. That's when you must stay true to your goals and keep moving forward. Moreover, consistency involves creating good habits. By consistently performing the same actions day in and day out, these habits become ingrained in you, shaping your life and making your dreams a reality. While some may find consistency challenging, it's ultimately a choice, one that requires discipline, determination, and a strong mindset. However, the rewards of consistency far outweigh the challenges. Consistency also thrives with a clear vision and purpose. You must know what you want and why you want it. With a clear vision and purpose, consistency becomes more manageable because you understand what you're working toward. Therefore, commit to consistency by showing up every day, regardless of the circumstances, and taking small, consistent actions towards your dreams. I promise you that if you stay consistent, you will see progress, and your dreams will become a reality. Now, on to the second key, commitment. Commitment is the unwavering determination to see something through to the end, no matter the challenges or obstacles that may come your way. It's what keeps you going when the going gets tough and turns your dreams into reality. In life, we all have dreams and aspirations. However, dreams remain mere fantasies until you commit to making them a reality. Commitment involves sacrificing short-term pleasures for long-term success. A story illustrates this. Many years ago, I met a young man who had a dream of becoming a successful businessman. He had a vision of building a company that would impact thousands of lives and leave a lasting legacy. But he had no money, no connections, and no experience. It seemed like an impossible dream, but this young man was committed. He was willing to do whatever it takes to turn his dream into reality. He worked odd jobs to save up money, networked with successful businessmen to learn from him, and read every book he could get his hands on about entrepreneurship. He faced countless failures and setbacks, but he never gave up. And today, that young man is a successful businessman running a multi-million dollar company that has changed the lives of many. That, my friends, is the power of commitment. Now, I understand that some of you may be thinking, but I have commitments, I have a job, a family, bills to pay. How can I commit to my dreams when I have so many other responsibilities? Well, let me tell you this. Commitment is not about finding the time. It's about making the time. It's about prioritizing your dreams and making them a non-negotiable part of your life. It's about sacrificing short-term pleasures for long-term success. Commitment is not a one-time decision. It's a daily choice. Every day, you have to choose to stay committed to your dreams, even when it's hard, even when it's inconvenient, even when it seems impossible. And let me tell you, it will be hard, it will be inconvenient, it will seem impossible at times. But that's when your commitment will be tested, and that's when it will matter the most. So, how do you cultivate commitment in your life? First and foremost, you have to be crystal clear about your dreams and goals. You have to know exactly what you want and why you want it. This clarity will give you the motivation and determination to stay committed. Next, you have to create a plan. You can't just say, I'm committed to my dreams, and expect things to magically fall into place. You have to have a plan of action, a roadmap to guide you towards your goals. And then, you have to take consistent action towards your dreams every single day. But here's the thing, commitment is not just about taking action, it's also about staying resilient in the face of adversity. Because let me tell you, there will be obstacles, there will be failures, there will be moments when you feel like giving up. But that's when your commitment will be put to the test, and that's when it will matter the most. And that's where personal development comes in. Personal development is the continuous process of improving yourself both personally and professionally. It's about building your mental and emotional strength so that you can overcome any challenge that comes your way. Now, onto the number one key to turning your dreams into reality, clarity. Clarity is the foundation of success. Without it, your dreams will remain just that, dreams. But with clarity, you can turn those dreams into reality. So, what exactly do I mean by clarity? Clarity is having a clear and specific vision of what you want to achieve. It's knowing exactly what you want and why you want it. It's having a detailed plan of action to get there. 
It's having a crystal clear understanding of your strengths, weaknesses, and the resources you have at your disposal. You see, most people have a general idea of what they want in life. They say things like, I want to be successful, or I want to be happy. But what does success or happiness mean to you? What does it look like? How will you know when you have achieved it? These are the questions that require clarity. Without clarity, you will be like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea. You may have all the drive and determination in the world, but without a clear direction, you will never reach your destination. You will be easily swayed by distractions and obstacles, and you will find yourself constantly changing course, never making any real progress towards your dreams. But when you have clarity, you have a map that guides you towards your goals. You know where you are going, and you can make the necessary adjustments along the way. Clarity gives you focus and purpose. It gives you the motivation to keep going even when things get tough. It is the fuel that keeps the fire of your dreams burning bright. So, how do you gain clarity? The first step is to get crystal clear on what you want. Take some time to really think about your dreams and goals. Write them down and be as specific as possible. Don't be afraid to dream big. Remember, the bigger the dream, the more fulfilling the journey will be. Next, ask yourself why you want to achieve these dreams. What is the driving force behind your goals? Is it to provide a better life for your family? Is it to make a difference in the world? Whatever your why may be, it is essential to have a strong and meaningful reason behind your dreams. This will give you the motivation and determination to keep going when things get tough. Once you have a clear vision and a strong why, it's time to create a plan of action. This is where most people fall short. They have a dream, but they have no idea how to make it a reality. But with a clear plan, you can break down your big goals into smaller, more manageable steps. This will not only make your goals seem more attainable, but it will also give you a roadmap to follow. Now, I must warn you, having clarity does not mean that the road to success will be easy. There will be challenges and setbacks along the way, but with clarity, you will have the courage and determination to overcome these obstacles. You will be able to stay focused on your end goal and not get discouraged by the bumps in the road. Another crucial aspect of clarity is understanding your strengths and weaknesses. This self-awareness is vital in achieving your dreams. When you know your strengths, you can use them to your advantage. And when you know your weaknesses, you can work on improving them or finding ways to work around them. This understanding will also help you make better decisions and surround yourself with the right people who can support and complement your strengths. Lastly, it is essential to have clarity about the resources you have at your disposal. These resources can be anything from your skills and knowledge to your network and financial means. Knowing what you have and what you need will help you make the most out of what you have and seek out the resources you need to achieve your dreams. In closing, my friends, I want to leave you with this thought. Clarity is the key to turning your dreams into reality. It is the foundation of success. With clarity, you can create a clear vision, a strong, why, a detailed plan of action, and the self-awareness and resources you need to achieve your dreams. So, I urge you to take the time to gain clarity in your life. It may be the most crucial step you take towards achieving your dreams. Thank you. Sure, here's the revised text. I'm about to reveal a secret to you, an ingredient that is missing from most of the success formulas out there today, which is why they don't work. Without this magic ingredient, your dreams and goals fall flat, no matter what they are or how long you've had them. But with this magic ingredient, you can accomplish anything and everything you want, and it's called self-discipline. There are several disciplines that you need to develop if you want to achieve your full potential. So, the first discipline of all is the discipline of clear thinking versus fuzzy thinking. Sometimes you've heard me ask, what is the highest paid work in America? What's the most important work in any job or any company? And the answer is thinking. The quality of your thinking determines the quality of your decisions and choices. Your decisions and choices determine the actions you take. The actions you take determine your results. Your results determine the quality of your life. And it all starts with your thinking. A little story that was in the papers recently, Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, and Bill Gates, the richest man in the world, and Bill Gates Sr. were at a dinner party. The three of them are good friends, and they were talking when a gentleman came up to them and said, you know, I was looking at you, and you gentlemen are very successful. What would you say is the most important quality of success? According to a bystander, all three broke off the conversation and turned and simultaneously said, focus. 
Focus is the most important requirement for success in our fast-moving world today. If you can focus, you can succeed, and if you cannot, you cannot. I'm always amazed when I go down the street or fly or drive, as people seem totally immersed in listening to things. They've got devices in their ears, stuff on their cell phones, and they're listening to music in their cars, and they're watching television. They simply cannot stop bombarding their minds with sensory input. And of course, when you're doing that, it is impossible for you to think well. To think well requires that you practice a couple of techniques. First of all, as Peter Drucker said, you need to take time to think. The rule is that fast decisions are usually wrong decisions, especially fast decisions involving people or money. So, if you're going to make a decision that has long-term consequences, then you have to give it a lot of thought. You have to sort of look at it like a beautiful piece of porcelain. You look at it from every single side and think about it carefully. And the more carefully you think about a decision, the better the quality of that decision will be when you finally make it. How many times have you said, you know, if I just thought about that a little bit more, I wouldn't have done it, or if I just thought a bit better or I'd just taken time to think. Superior people, through experience and through painful experience, learn to take their time in making important decisions. So, one of the very best ways that you can develop the discipline of clear thinking is to sit in solitude for 30 to 60 minutes when you have a major problem or a major issue in your life. This is what happens for you in solitude. You'll start to go calm, and all the energy, all the fidgetiness will disappear, and you'll just go calm. And it's almost like a bucket full of silky water. It'll sit there, and if you leave it sit there for a while, the water goes completely clear. And this is what happens to your mind. Your mind goes completely clear. And after the 30 minute point, what will happen is ideas will start to flow like a river, just start to flow through your mind. And this is non-directed. In other words, you don't think of this or think of that problem or think of that goal and have you just focus on your breathing, just relax, look out into the horizon, look at the picture on the wall or a flower. Some people look at a candle, but just look at it, keep your eyes open. This is not meditation, just sit there quietly. And at a certain point, ideas will start to come. And almost like a boat in a gentle pond, the idea that you need to solve your biggest problem or to achieve your most important goal, like a little bottle, just dock in your mind and it will be crystal clear. And it's the most amazing darn thing if you've never done it before. The first time you do it, you'll get a result. You'll get an insight, an idea, a solution to a problem, an idea to solve a goal. The first time you do it will be absolutely marvelous, and the next time you do it, you'll get it again. And every time you sit quietly in solitude for 30 to 60 minutes, you've got ideas that may save you years of hard work. Now, here's another way to think better. Take a sheet of paper, and the rule is, think on paper, and write down every detail. How it happened, what's going on, the problems, the concerns, the costs, who's involved. Just write it down, write it down, write it down. And the most amazing thing happens between the head and the hand as you're writing out all the details. Sometimes exactly the right choice pops out at you, becomes clear. But you would not have triggered that superconscious solution if you hadn't taken the time to think on paper. Aristotle once said that wisdom, which is the greatest of all human desires, wisdom is the ability to make good decisions, is a combination of experience plus reflection. Experience plus reflection. In other words, you have an experience. And then you reflect on the experience and you think about what does that experience mean to me? How can I use that? What can I learn from it? So, reflecting on your experiences, and the best way to do that is to go for a walk. Just going for a walk where you can't listen to anything. Don't take an iPod or anything. Just go for a walk 30 or 60 minutes and just walk. And while you're talking and reflecting upon something that's going on at work or at home, you'll be amazed at the quality of ideas that will come into your mind. A good way to think better is to ask, especially if you're frustrated or having difficulties, to ask, what are my assumptions? What am I assuming about this situation that may not be correct? What if my basic assumptions about this relationship, about this job, about this product or service, or this investment? What if my assumptions were wrong? Then what would I do? And here's the key to good thinking. Be open to doing something completely different. Be open to admitting the possibility that you could be wrong and doing something completely different. And what that does is it opens up your mind and your perspective so you can see all kinds of possibilities that you may not have seen before. Clear thinking is the first discipline, and it is the discipline practiced by the most successful, happiest, and wealthiest people in our society. 
Now, the second major discipline is the discipline of daily goal setting. Write down your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have your goals in writing, then they're not really goals at all. They're merely wishes. And as they say, a wish is merely a goal without any energy behind it. Have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly. And then do this every single morning. Rewrite your major goals in the first person singular or as though they already existed. If, for instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year, every single morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain kind of life, write down your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed. And then, every single evening, take about 5 to 10 minutes. Instead of watching television, just before you turn on the television, say, wait a second, I've got to review my progress. And sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day. And ask yourself, what have I done right today that's moved me toward my goals? And the second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? Those four steps, by the way, writing, rewriting your goals each morning, reviewing them in the evening, and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? And what would I do differently if I had the day to live over, if you will? Ask yourself those two questions. In the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. Because every time you write your goals down, you're programming them into your subconscious mind. When you program them into your subconscious mind, you set up a field of vibration within your brain. And this law of attraction, based on this field of vibration, attracts into your life people and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. Everybody here has had the experience of starting to read about a subject, think about a subject, become interested in a subject, and suddenly, you started to attract into your life books, magazines, articles, conversations, people, opportunities to expand on the subject. If you've had that experience before, what you do is you create a force field, which we cannot explain scientifically but it is a field of vibration that goes out from you and attracts back into your life everything that you need to realize your dominant goals. My promise to you is this, if you'll do this for one month, actually, 21 days is good enough, your whole life will change. You'll see changes that are astonishing. People come up to me at every single seminar and say, it was incredible. I started to write my goals every day. I accomplished eight of them in six months. I accomplished five in a week. I accomplished most of them within 12 months. It's transformed my life. So, all I ask you to do, if you're not already doing it, is give it a try. Now, the third discipline is the discipline of courage. Courage means that you have the ability, you have the willingness to confront your fears. Because what I've found over the years is that brave people, courageous people, are not people who are not afraid. They're simply people who master their fears. They're simply people who face their fears, confront their fears. And Mark Twain said it many years ago with regard to fear. He said, do the thing you fear, and the death of fear is certain. Now, fear and courage tend to be habits that, if you're afraid and you give in to the fear and you back away, it becomes a habit to back away whenever you're afraid or unsure. If you're afraid and you force yourself to confront the fear, it becomes a habit to confront the fear whenever you find something that you're afraid of. And you'll find that most fears disappear when you confront them. Most fears. Fears of failure, fears of rejection, fears of loss, fears of pain, fears of limitation, fears of the loss of a relationship, fears of ill health. Most of these fears disappear when you confront them head on. So, the reason you want to confront your fears is not because of the incident specifically, it's because of what it does for your character. You want to demonstrate to yourself that you can face down a fear and look it square in the eye, and suddenly, surprise, surprise, it goes away. And you realize that the fear was in your own mind. Here's an exercise for you. Identify one fear situation in your life today and use that as your challenge. Use that as your test case. You say, you know what? I'm going to face this fear down. I'm going to hammer it. I'm going to smash it. I'm going to look at it right in the eye. I'm going to deal with it head on, like a car hitting a wall, until the fear is gone. And once you've done that, you'll look up, and you'll be a different person for the rest of your life. You'll know that nothing that you're afraid of can stop you. Now, the fourth discipline is the discipline of daily time management. The rule is that every minute spent in planning saves 10 minutes in execution. So, disciplining yourself to plan your day thoroughly before you begin will save you at least 10 minutes for every minute you spend in planning. 
and according to the research, it will increase your productivity by 25 to 50 percent, maybe even double your productivity. For every day that you plan, begin the discipline of daily time management by making a list. Start off with a sheet of paper again. Think on paper and write down everything you have to do in the course of the day. The very best time to make this list is the night before. If you do this, then your subconscious mind works on your plan all night long, and you often wake up in the morning with great ideas to implement your plan. Then you organize your list by priority. Before you begin, you don't just jump into it. Use the 80 20th rule that says that 20% of the items on your list will account for 80% of the value, which are the most valuable. This is the hardest of all disciplines to learn. It's the essence of my teaching worldwide. It is the key to supercharging the quality of your life and your results. If you can start every morning with a list organized by priority and start on your one task and stay with it until it's done, you will supercharge your life. You will release endorphins in your brain that cause you to feel great. You will motivate yourself and energize yourself and propel yourself into all your other tasks. You'll get twice as much done on any day where you start and complete your major task first thing than any other day. The discipline of time management will then spread to all your other disciplines. When you can demonstrate each morning that you have the self-control, self-mastery, self-discipline to start and complete your most important task, you just feel fabulous about yourself. Now, the fifth discipline is the discipline of regular saving and investing. One of the smartest things you can ever do for yourself is to develop the habit of saving part of your salary every single paycheck. Individuals, families, and even societies are stable and prosperous to the degree to which they save money. Savings today are what guarantee the security and possibilities of tomorrow. The first core lesson of the law of saving and becoming a money-saving expert comes from the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, by George S. Clayson. It is to pay yourself first. Begin today to save 10% of your earnings off the top and never touch it. This is your fund for long-term financial accumulation, and you never use it for any other reason except to assure your financial future. The remarkable thing is that when you pay yourself first and force yourself to live on the other 90%, you actually promote frugal living. You'll soon become accustomed to living on 90% without any loss of convenience or anything else. Remember, you're a creature of habit. When you regularly put away 10% of your earnings, you soon become comfortable living on the other 90%. Many people start by saving 10% of their income and then graduate to saving 15%, 20%, and even more, then their financial life changed dramatically as a result. Now, here's an interesting point I learned from one of the smartest money managers I ever met. He said, when we're young, we associate money with pleasure. We get our first allowance and we spend it on candy, and we think that when we have money, we go and spend it on things that make us feel good. Now, when we become adults, whenever we think of getting a lot of money, our first thought is spending it on something that makes us happy. If you go to a tourist resort where people are on vacation and having a good time, you'll see row after row of knickknacks and gadgets because people, when they're happy, associate going out and buying stuff. However, what this does is it keeps you broke all your life. So what you do, and this is what he told me, is you rewire yourself. You kind of pull out one wire and replug it in. Instead of saying, I like spending money, you say, I like saving money. And you begin to think of how much you enjoy having money in the bank, how much you enjoy saving, how much you enjoy delayed gratification, how much you enjoy the idea of moving toward financial independence. And when you develop the habit of being happy about saving money, you start to find yourself more and more careful with your expenditures. Soon, you develop the habit of living on less than you earn, and you change your thinking from, I enjoy spending, to, I enjoy saving. There's a Japanese proverb that says, making money is like digging in the sand with a pin, losing money is like pouring water on the sand. It's easy to lose money, but it's hard to make it and keep it. And it's the most important discipline of all. Another discipline is to pay cash as often as possible and for as much as possible. Get rid of all your credit cards except for one and only use that one when you have to. The very act of paying cash really hypersensitizes you to how much it's costing and causes you to spend less money. W. Clement Stone once said, if you cannot save money, the seeds of greatness are not in you. The primary reason why you save your money and accumulate it carefully is because it gives you two things. First of all, it gives you freedom. You know you've got money in the bank. If you don't like your job, you can walk away from it because you've got money in the bank. But the second thing it gives you is opportunity. If an opportunity comes along, you're prepared to take advantage of it. 
You don't have to say, I'm sorry, I don't have any money, I can't afford it, I'm broke, and people just shake their head in pity and walk away. As an adult, you should always have opportunity money put aside, and when you have it, you feel great about yourself. The difference between a person with a little money and a person with no money is night and day. A person with a little money feels great. A person with no money always feels inferior, anxious, worried, concerned, irritable, short-tempered. Now, the sixth discipline is the discipline of continuous learning. What takes you from rags to riches is personal development. In the 21st century, as Peter Drucker says, knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century, and the only thing that will be relevant, the only skill that will be relevant in the 21st century, is the ability to learn new skills because virtually everything you know is becoming obsolete at a rapid rate. Stephen Covey says that your current knowledge base has a half-life of two years, which means that half of everything you know will be irrelevant within two years, and two years from now, half more. So, if you're not continually learning and upgrading your knowledge and skills, you're not staying in the same place. As Pat Riley says, the basketball coach, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. If you're not constantly learning, you're actually falling behind. So, here are the three keys to continuous learning. Number one is read in your field 30 to 60 minutes each day. In other words, turn off the television, turn off the radio, put aside the newspaper, and just read in your field. The very best places to read, by the way, are books. Read books, the best-selling books written by the most successful people in your field, because books contain a wealth of riches that can enable you to function at a far higher level, to get much better results than you could before. Countless people over the years find that reading an hour a day has doubled and tripled their income within a year. The second thing you do is take every course that you possibly can. The courses and seminars that are available to you in your field, that are given by professionals, that are courses that have been developed over years and years and years, they have been tested and tested and tested. The person who's talking to you for several hours has spent thousands of hours learning their subject. They have dry tested this, or done test runs with thousands of other people. When you take a course, you can learn enough information in one or two days more than you could learn in two or three years, or maybe even a lifetime, all distilled and put together. People say, I can't afford a course. You cannot afford not to buy books. You can't afford not to go to courses. The third way that you can upgrade your skills is to listen to audio programs in your car. Here's an interesting point. The more you commit yourself to becoming the best person you can be, the more you like yourself and respect yourself, the more energy you have, the bigger goals you set for yourself, the more you persist. When you invest in yourself and you read and learn and upgrade your skills, you're telling yourself, wow, I am a person with a great future, and it's up to me to maximize my potential. And your self-esteem goes up, your self-respect goes up, your sense of personal pride goes up, and you start to get promoted more and paid more in every part of your life. Now, the seventh discipline is the discipline of hard work. There's nothing that will help you more than for you to develop a reputation as a hard worker. In the studies of self-made millionaires, they said, I didn't have better education, better talent, better knowledge, but I was willing to work harder than anyone else. Most self-made millionaires work 60 and 70 hours per week for 5, 10, 15 years before they break through. Most other people are trying to get by on 5 days a week, and then during those 5 days a week, they don't work very hard at all. The interesting thing, Thomas Jefferson once said, do you believe in luck? He was asked. He said, yes. He said, I believe in luck, and the harder I work, the more that I have. So, the harder you work, the luckier you get. The harder you work, the more opportunities you have, the more doors open up to you, the more opportunities you see. There's a thing sweeping America today about having fun at work. No, work is not fun time. Work is not the playpen or the sandbox. Work is not school. Work is work. What you do is you go to work, and you work all the time. Don't worry about fun. Have your fun later, knowing that you've done a fantastic job and you've gotten a lot done. And finally, work one hour later. Be the last one to leave. Be the person who turns off the lights. Interesting. If you look at an entrepreneurial startup, a business that's being run by somebody who's really driving it forward, you'll find that the business owner is usually the first one there, works through the whole day, usually the last one to leave. The business owner usually works on Saturday and Sunday. At the end of the day, the business owner has got a beautiful house on the hill, beautiful cars, beautiful life, vacations about in the yacht basin, and everybody says, boy, she is sure lucky. No, they're not lucky. They just worked all the time. 
They work. If you work three extra hours, start earlier, work harder, stay later, you'll add six hours of productive work to your day. Every hour of uninterrupted work when nobody's there translates into three hours of productivity when there's people around interrupting you. So, keep asking at work, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? And then do only that.